Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, inshallah, Aziz, we will learn the fourth juz of Al Quran today. Uh, the part of the juz is Surah Al Imran, and then after that, we will start Surah Al Nisa. The juz starts with the Azubillah Ibn Shaitan or Rajim Lantanalul Birra Hatta Tunfiku Mimma Tuhibun. Here, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing those who have believed in Him that you can never reach the righteousness. Learn here is important because it means never. Hatta tunfiku ma tuhibbun until you spend what you love the most. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٍ And whatsoever of anything you spend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowledgeable about that. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the brief description about the Kaaba. Allah says, In awwala baytin, the indeed the first of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Vodi al in nasi that has been appointed, Lilladi bi bakkata, it is the one that is in the valley of Bakka, which is Makkah. Allah says, This house is Mubarakan, is a blessed one. And it is a guidance for the people of the world. Allah further says, In it are the very clear manifest signs. Maqamu Ibrahim, the station of Ibrahim is there. Allah says, وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ amina, Whosoever has entered this house, he became in peace. Then Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ Upon the people is the right Allah subhanahu wa for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go for the hajj of this house. But condition is that manistata ilaihi sabila, who is capable of affording it, then he should proceed for the hajj of this house for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with this brief description, we move on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is issuing multiple commands in this in this uh, surah and one of them is about inviting the people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a very famous ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal takum minkum ummatun yad'una ila al khair let there be among you among the believers among the muslim umma a group of people who are inviting towards the righteousness we are Muruna Bil Maruf and they command the right the right and the good. Wayana Hauna Anil Munkar and they forbid from the wrong. Waula Ika Humul Muflehun and these are the people who are successful. So among the Muslim Ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created multiple groups who go out and invite others towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should encourage them, we should help them, we should support them by whatever means we can do because that is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to do. Then there is an ayat here which is recited in the khutbah of Jum'ah and I want to explain that one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu taqullah O those of you who have believed, have taqwa, have consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and further says, Haqqa tuqatihi, as is the right to have the taqwa for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in detail and with emphasis, Wala tamutunna, make sure the, the death does not reach you. Illa wa antum muslimun, except you are in the state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says that wa atasimu bihablillahi jamia and hold on very tightly the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala tafarraku and do not you know divide among yourselves. Was kuru ni'matallahi alaikum and remember the blessing and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly uh, instructing the believers to do the right things and what are the responsibilities as we move on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing this entire ummah by saying 
kuntum khaira ummatin you are best of the nations uh, the muslims ukhrijat lin nasi you have been brought out for the people for the mankind for all the mankind so what do you do if you have to be the best of the umma ta'muruna bil ma'ruf you command for the right thing wa tanhauna anil munkar and you forbid from the wrong wa tu'minuna billah and you yourselves believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we continue <clears throat> and this surah takes us to the battle of uhud this battle took place about 3 uh, years uh, after the migration in al madina and in this the, before the battle of allah subhanahu wa taala in very details have has explained uh, the situation of what happened in the battle of uhud but before that another battle had taken place which is the battle of badr in that battle muslims were in very few number but allah subhanahu wa taala gave them victory over the disbelievers now 3 years later after the migration the quraish from makka decided to attack medina and wipe out whatever number of muslims were there so allah subhanahu wa taala he explains here uh, in several steps which inshallah i will try to explain here but something happened during the battle and muslims lost the battle so allah subhanahu wa taala is addressing prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all these ayats were revealed after the battle was over and muslims had suffered some losses actually some heavy losses so allah subhanahu wa taala is addressing prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by saying wa id ghadawta min ahlika tubawwi'u al-mu'minina maqa'id lil-qital the day of the battle when it was going to start allah said that you o prophet went out of your home in the morning and your intention in your purpose was to set up the battle field and appoint the people who will be fighting there wallahu samiun alim so first thing that happened is hammat taifatan minkum an tafshala there were two groups among you who lost the courage allah was waliyuhuma was their friend was their helper so allah says wa ala allah falyatawakkal al mu'minun mu'minin should believe in allah trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding wa laqad nasarakum allah bi badrin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped you already in the battle of Badr wa antum adhillatan and you were less in numbers fattaqullaha la'allakum tashkurun so have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you may be thankful now <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quoting here a statement which prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made before the battle of Uhud took place Allah says is taqulu lil mu'minina when you are saying o prophet to the believers alain yakfiyakum ay yumiddakum rabbukum bi thalasati alaf min al malaikati is it not enough for you that your lord will help you with 3000 angels munzilin they will be coming down to help you and then allah further said after that bala yes in tasbiru if you are patient وتتقوا ان هاف تقوى في الله سبحانه وتعالى وياتوكم من فوركم ان اف ات هابنز ذات انيمي اول اوف ا سدن اتاكس يو ذن وات الله ويل دو يمددكم ربكم بخمسه الاف من الملائكه ذن يور لورد ويل هيلب يو وذ 5000 انجلز اند دي ويل بي ويل بريبيرد اند كم اند هيلب يو and allah says wama ja'ala allah illa bushra this news that you are being given that angels will come and help you is just to give a peace of mind to your heart walitat ma inna qulubukum so your hearts feel itminan peace but wama nasru illa min indillah the help is actually from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if allah decides to help you then no one can harm you so the battle started <clears throat> and uh, it moved on 
until something happened and we will go at that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning uh, that situation in details here um, last year I when I went for Hajj I went and visited this place where the battle of Uhud took place this is a range of mountains uh, and the mountains are not very tall and they are not really widespread just like, like two miles or so but in front of the mountains, range of mountains, there is a small hill. And that was the hill where Prophet Wasallam, when he was setting up this battlefield situation, appointed some archers there. Some of those uh, people among the companions who were shooters, arrow shooters. So they had certain tasks to carry out. Okay. So that was the preparation for the battlefield. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now saying what happened. The ayat will come later. But this ayat is uh, pre the precursor of that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where the, the people who were appointed on that hill, they disobeyed the command. As a result of that, the war or the battle that Muslims were winning, they started losing the battle. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding that because Muslims were disheartened after that. The ayat says, In yam saskum qarhun, if a wound has touched you, faqad masal qawma qarhum misluhu, similar way the wound has befallen or touched another nation before you. And this is referring the incident of Badr, that in Badr, the, the, uh, the enemy were defeated and they, they suffered the losses. Now you are suffering this loss in the battle of Ohad. Allah says very beautifully, These are the days we rotate among the people. The days rotate among the people. Today you have upper hand, tomorrow somebody else has the upper hand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues mentioning the situation of the battle of Uhud. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah has made His promise come, وَعَدَهُ His promise come true. And then what's happening? Allah says, إِسْتَهُسُّونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِهِ When you, the Muslims, were wiping out, were eliminating the enemy, which means the um, Muslims were winning the battle and at something happened at that moment Allah says Hatta is a fashiltum until you lost courage wa tanaza'atum fil amri very important tanaza is a dispute this word is when the dispute happens among the same group of people among the same community when they start disputing the word tanaza is used so what happened is that the, the people who were appointed on that hill, they saw that Muslims were winning and enemy was being defeated. So they decided that they should go down and start collecting the booty which the enemy was leaving behind. Some other archers on the, on the hill said, no, don't go down because Prophet Wasallam has appointed us here. We don't need to leave our situation, our position. But that is the dispute that happened. The people who were appointed there became two groups. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Tanazatum fil amri wa asaitum and you disobeyed. Mimba ba'di ma arakum. After that Allah had shown you ma tuhibbun the victory. Allah says minkum ma yuridu dunya some of you wanted to have the worldly gains, the booty. And some of you wanted the hereafter. So what happened? So they start, the, you started losing the battle and the enemy started winning the battle. Allah, and and uh, at that point, Khalid ibn Walid, Walid, who was actually a commander of the Quraysh who was attacking the Medina, he found a weak spot and he turned around and he attacked and many, a large number of companions of Prophet were killed, were martyred there 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in next ayat, one of the ayats, that they are rasul yad'ukum fi ukhraakum. People started running and the Prophet was calling them from behind. So the, the battle situation from the victory turned into the defeat. Allah says, Allah was still kind with you, He forgave you. Summa anzala alaykum min ba'adal ghammi amanatan. After that, after that you were in a distressed situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down His peace upon you and you started taking it easy in your life and time. So this surah continued and uh, after that we will now go to the uh, next surah which is the surah um, An-Nisa but I want to just cover one more ayat before I go into that. This is a very famous dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us Rabbana innana sami'na munadiyan O our Lord, we have heard, we have definitely have heard Munadiyan a caller. Yunadi, he was calling Lil Iman towards the faith and what he was saying An Aminu Birabbikum Believe in your Lord. So O Allah Fa'amanna, we have believed. Rabbana Fa'afir Lana Dhunubana, O our Lord, <coughs> forgive us our sins. وَكَفِّرْ عَنَّا سَيِّعَاتِنَا And also remove from us our evil deeds. وَتَوَفَّنَا مَعَ الْأَبْرَارِ And give us death along with those people who are righteous people. رَبَّنَا وَعَاتِنَا مَا وَعَاتَّنَا O our Rabb, O our Lord, give us what you have promised ala rusulika to your messengers. وَلَا تُخُزِّنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And do not humiliate us on the day of judgment. You do not break your promise. Then there is another ayat. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is admiring and reminding the believers. Those are the people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qiyaman while they are in the standing situation. وَقُعُودًا And they are sitting down. وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ And they are laying on their sides. So remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always have has to be there. Doesn't matter if you're standing, you're sitting, you're laying on your sides. And Allah further says the quality of these people is that karuna fi samawati wal ard, and they ponder on the creation of the heavens and earth, and they say Rabbana ma khalaqta haza batila subhanaka fakina zabanar o our Lord. You have not created all this in vain and you are glorified so save us from the hellfire. Then we start the Surah An-Nisa. The very first ayat of Surah An-Nisa is uh, recited at the time of marriage as well as in the Friday Khutbah. I'll briefly translate. Ya ayyuhannasu taqu rabbakum O the mankind. Here all the mankind are be, people are being addressed. Have taqwa of your Lord. خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ wahida. He has created all of you, every one of you from a single soul. He is the Adam. وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And then he also created from it its spouse. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا kasira. And by the combination of the two, Allah has spread a multitude of men, one isa and the women. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي And have taqwa of Allah. Tasa'aluna bihi, you ask each other through him. Wal arham and fear, the relationship of the wombs, which means the relationship of sisters and brothers. When they are little, they play together. When they get old, they don't even see each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over you. Then the ayat turns toward the inheritance. In, in this surah, in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in very much details has described the laws of inheritance. But the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that لِلْرِجَالِ نَسِيبٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ When the parents or the near relatives die, then the portion of the inheritance belongs to the man whose parents have died. Likewise, 
وَلِلنِّسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِّمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ and also for the woman, a wife or anyone whose parents or near relatives have died, the inheritance, she has the inheritance in, in, in uh, share in that inheritance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مِمَّا قَلَّ مِنْ هُوَا كَثَرْ Even if the in amount of inheritance is small or large, نَصِيبًا مَفْرُوضًا The portion is already appointed who will get how much. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا هَدَرَ الْقِسْمَةَ When you are distributing the inheritance, then look for أُولُو الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ If some needy or some orphan or some other poor relatives show up, فَرْزُقُوهُمْ مِنْهُ Give them some. وَقُولُوا لَهُمْ قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا And say very kind words to them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُوسِيكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي أَوْلَادِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises you that you have the fear, the, the share in the inheritance. And then after that, in a large number of ayats, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the different options. If how many children are there, if the sister brothers are there and children are not there, who will get what? If the family is not there, <clears throat> only parents are there, who will get how much? All these things are described in this surah in detail. Then uh, we will go to one ayat. Then after that, the topic switches. And there are many descriptions in between. The topic switches to who you can marry and whom you cannot marry. So this one ayat, which is just before the fifth Jews, and the fifth Jews again, this, the Jews of al muhsanat goes into details. But here I want to translate this one ayat, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that which woman is forbidden to you to marry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hurrimat alaykum ummahatukum have been forbidden to you, have been made haram to you, your mothers. You cannot marry your mothers. Wa banatukum and you cannot marry your daughters. Wa khawatukum and you cannot marry your aunts from your mother's side. When you cannot marry your sisters, and you cannot marry your aunts uh, from the mother's side, uh, father's side, and khala, you know, your uh, aunts, you cannot marry them. And you cannot marry your nieces from your brother's side. And you cannot marry the, the daughters of your sisters. وَأُمَّهَاتُكُمُ اللَّاتِ أَرْدَعَنَكُمْ You cannot marry those women who have nursed you. You have, uh, you know, drank their, their, their milk when you were a baby. وَأَخَوَاتُكُمْ مِنَ الرَّدَاعِ And if there is another girl who shared the same milk, you cannot marry her. Then, وَأُمَّهَاتُ نِسَائِكُمْ You cannot marry the mothers of your wives. وَرَبَائِبُكُمُ اللَّاتِ فِي هُجُورِكُمْ And you cannot marry those girls whose mothers you have married. You know, you have, she had a previous marriage and she had daughters. You cannot marry those girls if you have married. مِن نِسَائِكُمْ So, they, and then there are few others details. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that... Uh, وَهَلَا إِلَىٰ أَبْنَائِكُمُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ أَسْلَابِكُمْ And those women who are from your progeny generation, like your son's daughters or something like that. And then last women who are forbidden is وَأَن تَجْمَعُوا بَيْنَ الْأُخْتَيْنِ That you marry two women who are sisters at the same time. You marry one, if you divorce her or she passes away, then you can marry her sister. But you cannot marry both the sisters at the same time. And Allah says, Illa ma Whatever has happened, has happened in the past. Before Islam, whatever wrong was being done, that was being done. Inna Allah kana ghafoor ar rahima Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoor and rahim He will forgive whatsoever has happened in the past. After that, when you have accepted the Islam, 
then you have to follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding you. So this takes us to uh, the portion of the Surah An-Nisa toward to the end of fourth Jews. Inshallah, Aziz, tomorrow we'll start the next Jews, which is Jews number five, which is called Wal Muhsanatu Min An-Nisa'i. And there are many, many detailed commands that are mentioned in this Surah and in this Jews. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this effort from us and help us to understand the Quran. Sadaqallahu Allahul Azim.